Hey everybody, in tonight's video, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about my job and what I do for a living. So for the past two years or so, I've been an Airbnb host. That's been my main source of income for about two years. So this video is just gonna be me talking about what I do day to day, and it's gonna be tips to myself. I'm kinda of gonna frame this video as if it's being sent to me in the past two years ago. So it's gonna be like tips and uh, advice and just things I didn't know about and wasn't aware of and didn't consider two years ago when I was just getting started. My main job is being a maid. That's really what I do day to day. That's the main effort that I put into being a host. You know, uh, other parts of being a host are answering guests' questions, designing the rooms, decorating the rooms, getting furniture for the rooms, fixing things, installing doorknobs, the financial aspects of being a host. But the main job is just being a maid. So we have eight bedrooms. We have uh, two apartments. One has uh, five bedrooms and one has three bedrooms. So there's eight, eight bedrooms total. We rent them out per bedroom. So it's mainly strangers living with other strangers in a shared apartment. So everybody gets their own private bedroom and then they share a living room, dining room, kitchen, bathroom. So that's, that's just how we do it. Some people rent it out, you know, the whole apartment, but we just do it by the bedroom. I think it's a little bit more profitable that way in our situation. When I was in college, I was an RA and a big part of being an RA in college is making sure everybody gets along. So a little bit of my job is making sure everybody at the Airbnb gets along. Just an unexpected thing that I, I did that in college and then it's paying off now um, at the Airbnb. So some tips to myself. I'm gonna start off with some product recommendations to, um, to fill your Airbnb. First up, if you're getting a TV for your, your Airbnb, I would recommend a Fire TV or a Roku TV. Not a Fire Stick, not a Roku Stick, but a Fire TV with it built in. With the Fire TV built in, it's just one remote, and a big key to this is just keeping it as simple as possible. There's one power button, one volume button, so there's not like a table, there's not a coffee table full of remotes, just one single remote. And um, you know, if you have elderly guests, you just wanna keep everything as simple as possible. I keep my Wi-Fi password super simple, you know, I just try to keep everything as simple as possible. With this, it's easy to see where the inputs are on the TV. They can't mess up the, you know, HDMI input. And the, the simpler everything is, the less questions you're going to get from guests. And it's just uh, better overall. And if your Airbnb is kind of affordable and budget like ours is, I would recommend not getting cable TV. You not spending that extra money on cable TV is just extra money in your own pocket. And just based on what I've heard from talking to guests, most of them just don't care about that. Most people just um, are fine with streaming apps, and we have antenna TV built into the, the TV, and a nice thing about the Fire Stick is it has buttons right there for Netflix and um, Amazon Prime, which is one button away, and most of you already probably, probably have uh, Netflix and Hulu and you know Amazon Prime. Just link up your own accounts to these. Um, you know, It's been no problem. At first, I was kind of worried they would like mess with our accounts on Netflix or whatever, but it's never been a problem in the two years we've been doing it. Another product recommendation is fans. If you don't have central air in every room, I would recommend getting fans that are built into the wall. They're gonna save you space, especially if you use small rooms. We kind of have small rooms at our Airbnb. Another product recommendation I would recommend is uh, bedding and sheets with stripes on them, just like this. So as a hotel maid, I have to make beds like multiple times a week. I have to make beds and, you know, re redo the bedding. So with the striped bedding, it's a lot easier to tell the orientation of the bedding. See, like with the stripe going this way, I know the bedding goes this way. I know it does not go this way. So that's just like a little tip. And um, another tip for bedding is if you have multiple sized beds, color coordinate them. I think the way we do it was we have blue for a twin bed, dark blue for the king bed, and then, you know, striped ones for the, the queen beds. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're doing this multiple times a week, not, not messing up the orientation of the sheets on the bed, it's gonna save you, you know, time in the long run. Like maybe it'll save you one minute per, per time you're cleaning the room, but if you're doing that hundreds of times throughout the year, those seconds and minutes add up. Another little tip is to get stickers for food labels. Especially if you're in our situation where you have uh, a shared space, 
and I would recommend getting one of these pockets. These are nice for the fridge. Just, you know, just stick it on the fridge. You can put the food labels in there. The food labels are especially important when you're renting it out per bedroom like we are, because in our case, we have five people sharing one refrigerator. So sometimes people leave food in there and it might stick around for months after they move out if they leave it in there. But if they put a food label on it, it lets us know who it belongs to and people are less likely to eat each other's food if they put a label on it. And we also have multiples of these for food clips, rubber bands and other things just to stick on the fridge. Another product recommendation, when you're cleaning your Airbnb, I would recommend using bleach and Windex. You know, I clean the Airbnb multiple times a week. A lot of the times from start to finish, it it's not very noticeable, you know? When, when I enter the Airbnb, the cleanliness is like 95%. When I leave, it's like 100%. So a lot of the guests wouldn't have even known I was there. But I like using products like bleach and Windex because they leave a smell. So your guests know that you were there. They know that you're cleaning the, the Airbnb. They know that it's, you know, that's been clean. They know that you're uh, putting an effort to clean the Airbnb. With Windex, sometimes even just spray it around the room a little bit because it, it has this subconscious effect of you just smelling Windex and, and um, associating that with the room being clean. With the bleach, that's mainly for, you know, the bathroom and shower. You don't want to use that on um, your hardwoods, but but definitely use a, you know, a cleaning product that has a noticeable smell just so they know you cleaned. Another product recommendation is getting lamps with outlets and USB ports built in. At first we bought lamps and then we bought these separate boxes for the nightstand with USB ports and outlets on them, you know, so people can charge their phones and whatnot. But it would have cost us about the same to just buy a lamp with it all built in and it would be one less cord. It would look less cluttered on the nightstand and it's just better overall. That's what hotels do just because it's just the better thing to do. And again, it's just a one-time cost. Um, so just, do it and just be done with it. And uh, your guests will be happy because they have something to charge their device with. Another tip is do not go cheap on the door locks. This is a big mistake we made. At our first Airbnb, I just I looked for the cheapest door locks possible with a keypad on them. And I bought these really cheap ones from China and about once a month they would have a problem and I would have to rush up there. You know, I'd get, I would get calls in the middle of the night and I would have to rush up to the Airbnb to unlock the doors for them and help them out with the locks. That was a big mistake. If I would have paid about $200 more, I could have gotten high-end locks on all the doors, like $200 total for all the locks. So we ended up replacing a lot of the locks that we initially put in and it ended up just wasting money because we spent money on locks initially, then we had to replace them and it ended up just wasting money. So don't cheap out on the locks. You know, it's not worth getting a low rating, just to save a couple bucks. Uh, I'm generally pretty frugal and cheap. My advice to you is to don't cheap out on stuff that you're only gonna buy once. Um, we also cheaped out at first on towels. That is not a good, that's not a good idea because we also bought cheap towels, realized like we would get better reviews if they were good quality. So we had to buy, you know, better quality towels and get better quality towels. But you don't want to be cheap on it if you're just buying it one time. You know, if you go cheap and you try to get deals, do it on things that are, um, you know, you know, replaceable, like, like uh, soap and shampoo. We provide that to our guests. Go cheap on that because they're just going to use it and then it gets flushed down the drain, you know? Go cheap on that, and most people won't even know the difference between a super cheap shampoo and a high-end one. So cheap out on situations that are like disposable and single use, but don't cheap out on uh, just single one-time purchases. Another tip to save money when you start off is to buy used wooden furniture on Craigslist that's like scratched up and beat up. Um, cause if you're filling an entire unit for Airbnb, you have to buy a lot of furniture. So buy scratched up like tables and dressers and then just sand them and stain them. It's like staining wood is very simple. It's very easy. And uh, you can save a fortune instead of buying brand new furniture. A tip for trash bags for your whole Airbnb, pick one size bag 
and um, you know have every bedroom have the same size trash bag. <laughs> That's it. Sounds like a small thing, but when you're managing inventory, I have to buy you know supplies and restock supplies. When, when we started out, we had four different sized trash bags that we had to keep track of and keep in stock, and we eventually just switched over to um, having the same size bag trash bag in in every bedroom. And, um, and, you know, the same thing for the bathroom. Another tip is to keep the trash bags in the bottom of the trash can. So this way you're saving extra seconds. Instead of walking to the closet on the other side of the Airbnb to get the trash bags, just leave them inside of the can and just take out the trash. And then the trash bags are right there in the bottom of the can. You just pull them up and put them in the can. Uh, another tip... <laughs> is don't don't use these big Charmin Forever rolls. I thought I was being very clever when I ordered these because these are supposed to last a month. You know, when, when, my store, when I started out the Airbnb, I thought it was kind of like a waste of my time to replace the, the toilet paper roll every time I was up there. And I thought, hey, if I just got one of these big ones, um, it would save me time and save me effort. But the reason not to get these is because it looks weird to guests. And also, these clog the toilets a lot. Um, we never had a problem with the clogged toilets with the regular thinner rolls, but these are like, it's like thicker paper. And these, when we started using these, it was like, within two weeks, the toilet was clogged three times. And because because it's more paper, people end up just using a lot more of it. And um, so I would recommend not using one of these huge toilet paper rolls. Another tip is that if you provide them with, if you, if you provide your guests with any kind of gifts or food or, um, you know, any anything in the kitchen, uh, I would recommend not giving them perishable food. For a while at the Airbnb, I tried to give them like a basket of, uh, I, I tried to keep a basket of fruit in the kitchen. But the problem is not everybody eats fruit. So I would buy, spend money on my, spend my own money on a bunch of fruit, fill up this basket, and it would just go bad. Another bad thing I did was I bought a bunch of lollipops, and then I put them in a bowl in the living room, and it was the summertime, so they all melted together. We also had a couple guests just take a couple licks of the lollipop and just put it in random places. Like, I think I found some behind a couch, and some people just leave them on the dresser. But then it leaves a big sticky mess, which is a big pain in the butt to clean up. So that was a bad idea. Don't do, don't do a big bowl of uh, meltable lollipops. Um, food I would recommend giving your guests is give them single-use oatmeal packets and just leave them in the kitchen. You know they're not going to go bad for years, and most people are not going to use them anyway. But they see them in the kitchen and they, you know, they're grateful that you're providing them anything. You know, also provide them maybe some hot chocolate mix, coffee, and just other essentials like sh sugar, salt, things like that. So, you know, things like that to, that do not go bad are good to provide to your guests. And they're relatively inexpensive. Nobody's going to steal, like, sugar from you. Like, they're just not going to. But when we first started out the Airbnb, I was always worried that people were going to steal stuff from us. And I think only one time we've had anything stolen. Somebody stole a Google Home mini from us and it was i was out in the public space there's nothing we could really do about it because um we don't have any cameras and there's just it could have been any of the guests so we have no way of proving who it was but but in two years we've only had that one thing stolen so don't over worry about people stealing stuff like most of the guests are pretty cool another tip is to trust your gut we've had like two bad guests and we're, we're two like very bad guests one time on New Year's, this girl rented the Airbnb on New Year's Eve, the night of New Year's Eve, for one night. And she ended up throwing a big party, and we had to call the police, and um, we had to kick her out. And she damaged some furniture, she left a huge mess, tons of beer, the place smelled like smoke. It was a big mess. Um, the thing is... I, I predicted that that was going to happen when she booked. I just, I saw that she had no reviews. She was using bad grammar in her messages to me, you know, as she was booking. Um, trust your gut. I should have just 
canceled her reservation. Like, I knew something bad was going to happen. Another time, a guest left a big mess in the room. When they booked, they booked for one person, and in their message, they said they're it's for them and their girlfriend or something. And um, I should have just trusted my gut. Like, there's usually warning signs, is my point, when um, a guest is not going to be good. Another tip is when you're taking pictures of the room, use a wide-angle lens. Right now, I'm recording this with a GoPro. You can see the whole room. Like, you can see the whole thing. All three or four walls or whatever. Um, I would recommend that. It gives guests a better idea of what the room is like. Maybe disclose to them in your Airbnb description that you're using a wide-angle lens so they don't think it's too big. But if you use a normal... Or also the new iPhones have the wide lens too. And a lot of the new Androids have it too. But if you're using um, just a traditional lens, it's going to be like narrow like this. And you're just not going to get a good idea. If you just saw that, would you have a good idea of what the room was like? No. The, the wider it is, the more you see, the more um, just perspective you get for it. Another tip is just to label everything. I put labels on the soap. And I just have a label that says, this is shared, this is for anybody. I put a label on the shampoo, label on the salt, label on the, the coffee. You know, if I just pictured myself as a guest, if I was sharing a space with other people, I wouldn't want to use, a, you know, something in the kitchen if I wasn't sure that it was meant to be shared. So just label everything. Um, you know, we put up no smoking signs. You can just, you never have too many signs. I mean, you don't, you can have too many signs. That's... You can't have too many signs. You don't want to act like you're parenting them. But at the same time, you know, it's good to have a lot of signs just to uh, make sure people know like, what they can use and what they can't use. Another tip is that when you're doing the Airbnb listing description, tell your guests the good things about your Airbnb and tell them the bad things about the Airbnb. When we started off, basically only told them the good stuff. Like, hey... It's got a big bed and lots of parking. It's a good, it's good uh, space. But we kind of left out things in the description that make it not so good. Like one of the Airbnbs, the uh, the floor is like has a slight tilt to it, like a one or two degree tilt to it. Like this is level. The floor is like this in uh, in one of the living rooms in our Airbnb. And we didn't mention that at the beginning. And then we had guests complain. That it's like an older house so we just updated the description and now people don't complain about it because they know about it going in it's just better to be honest about the good and the bad about your airbnb most people just won't care as long as you're just upfront about it at, at the beginning okay another tip is to have a good a good welcome book when we started out we just had a one uh, little piece of paper just a little welcome but uh we upgraded that to a, a actual welcome book and um you know it it's something you just have to do one time. It takes like maybe a day to make a good welcome book. And um, you can just, you can Google it and just copy what other people say in their book. Another tip is, this is, this is not going to apply to many people, but this is a tip just in our own situation. Our two Airbnbs are across the street from each other. So we bought this Wi-Fi extender. So instead of us paying for two different you know, Wi-Fi connections, we just beam the signal across the street. We're able to save a bunch of money that way. We spend half as much on the, the internet. So it's kind of a big upfront cost, but it saves us a bunch of money. Another thing to keep in mind is that bookings will go up and down. During the good times, set some money aside for a rainy day. For us, our bookings kind of go down in the middle of the winter, the end of January, beginning of, um, I'm sorry, the end of December, beginning of January, they kind of go down. They were almost completely empty for us, to be honest. Then in March, they are like completely booked. Just set some money aside. Things will go up and down throughout the year. It's not, it's not like a regular job. Uh, you should also list your listing on home away and just try out, um, other apartment rental services. Home away is very similar to Airbnb. It's just a little bit less known, but, um, you know, probably close to doubling your number of views your listing that way. Another thing to keep in mind is that people are going to leave you bad reviews. You know, if you have like a hundred reviews, it's pretty much guaranteed that one of them is going to be bad and you should take your reviews seriously. Listen to what people say. Some people have good advice. Some people have good criticism and they have legitimate concerns. I'm not trying to like delegitimize what, what they say, 
But at the same time, understand that some people who leave you a bad review are just in a bad mood and like overly picky. And it's just, just keep in mind that it's, it's inevitable that you're going to get a bad review. Um, just do your best. Listen to what your guests say in their reviews. But at the same time, don't take it personally. This was kind of a big thing for me to begin with because I was just constantly worried that my listings were going to get shut down. Took what everyone said to heart and took it personally. But I, um, over time, just you, you just have to learn to, to not do that. Um, like, one time a guest like saw a single bug, and they gave us one stars. Somebody said there was a little bit of dirt in the microwave, gave us one star. But I mean, it's a shared space, and I can't be there every single minute of the day cleaning up after every single guest. So. It's kind of just inevitable that you're going to have um, you know, some bad reviews here and there. Another tip is that, for me personally, I I set my um, alarm sound on the Airbnb app to be an air horn. A very loud air horn. This way, it's loud enough to wake me up if somebody sends me a message through Airbnb. So if somebody's locked out, uh, this air horn sound will wake me up and I'll be able to... Um, get up there and take care of whatever the problem is or just answer the guest's question as soon as possible. I've heard stories about some Airbnb hosts who take up to a month <laughs> to respond to some messages and to answer people's questions. For me, on average, I probably answer people's uh, questions and just a guess, but maybe 10 minutes on average, I'll, I'll have an answer for them. I I'm, I'm, That's something I'm very good at and very proud of. Another tip is to read the product in information and the description on cleaning products. Um, this is a mistake I made. I didn't do this at the beginning. Just some cleaning products are made for are made for some surfaces. Some cleaning products are not <laughs> made for some surfaces. So when we started out, I used some harsh chemicals on uh, a wooden table, and I damaged it and I scratched it up. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, just read your cleaning product uh, labels. And, you know, there's also, if you mix certain chemicals together in cleaning products, you can create, like, poisonous gas. You don't want to do that. That would be that would be bad at an Airbnb. In my personal situation, I share the Airbnb with my parents. My parents are landlords, and they have, I don't know, a few dozen buildings in Pittsburgh. We're just doing these two units, two units in uh, two different buildings, and we just share the profits. Their main job is to um, to own the building and keep the lawn maintained um, because they're already doing that for their other properties anyway. And um, if there's a roof leak, that's their responsibility. Then my responsibility is just all the cleaning and all the other Airbnb stuff. And it's kind of a win-win for both of us. It's nice having my parents own the building because I'm able to like hang up shelves on the wall and I don't have to ask for their permission just because I know it would be okay because they're my parents and uh, it's fine for me to change the door locks and whatnot and I know it's it's fine it's nice having my parents as the owners of the building there's just more leniency I don't have to call them and get micromanaged by every little thing it's a win-win for both of us because they they make more money with this even though we're sharing the profits they still make more money than they would if we were just renting it out normally. It's a little bit more work for them, to be honest, because they have to, like, uh, they had to help me get the furniture to begin with, but at the end, they do make a little bit more money. Okay, now I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just cleaning the Airbnb. At first, it was kind of, like, it was nice because it was something new, and it was exciting, and it was like, I'm learning new ways to clean. Then it kind of went downhill a little bit because I just started to get bored with it, and, um... You know, maybe like six months in, I was kind of getting bored with it and just of the repetitiveness of it. Later on, it kind of went back up a little bit of my just enjoyment of it. And I'm kind of, um, sometimes it's almost like a Zen experience cleaning the Airbnb, like a meditation experience, because it's a lot of repetition. You know, I get to put on, you know, some music, some headphones, listen to music and just jam out while I'm cleaning the Airbnb. You kind of have your mind completely focused on just cleaning so it's kind of like meditative in that it's removing the other distractions of life. <laughs> that sounds weird, but kind of enjoyable in a way. 
I have like a checklist in my mind of things I need to do and check. I'm always looking for ways to make it more efficient and save time and just ways to do it better. And it's like, it's something, uh, it's, it's like different than any other job I've had. Most of my other jobs in the past have been like on a computer, just sitting down all day. Uh, I mean, about 10 years ago, I did work at Walmart cleaning Walmart. So it's similar to that, I guess. But, but it's nice having a more, um, just physically active job in a way. It's also better than cleaning at Walmart because there's no boss. Like I get to pick my own hours. I get to pick how things are done. I remember working at Walmart and thinking of ways that they could do things better, but there was just so much bureaucracy that they would never implement those changes to make it better. But at the Airbnb, I can recognize like, oh, if I do this, I can save a couple seconds. If I do this, I can do it better this way. You know, it's nice just being your own boss. Oh, I guess I'll drink some water. Cheers.